welcome back to my roughly weekly reading update and I have a couple of interesting books to talk about. First is a nonfiction book. So this is The Secret History of Wonder Woman by Jill Lepore, which sounds like the coolest book. Like, I love comics, I love Wonder Woman, I mean she has a very complicated history. She was originated in the 40s as this great heroine of feminism and in the 50s her character took kind of a disappointing turn. Uh, so I thought it was going to be really cool. I was really looking forward to it and I had expectations as I have expectations about everything really. It's hard not to have expectations. But the thing is, this book is actually a biography of a guy. It's the guy who created um, Wonder Woman, but Wonder Woman barely factors into this book. Like The pages that are actually have Wonder Woman in it are a few far between, mostly just at the very end of the book. The first half is solidly like biography of Marston this dude and admittedly he has like a pretty interesting life growing up he has a complicated family history and dynamics and which had been secret for decades then it comes out in this tell-all which is cool so this book really is an like a to z biography of Marston who later in his life created Wonder Woman but we do talk about his all his previous careers on the way there and so it's not just touching on what is related to comics and Wonder Woman it's this guy's like whole life it's it's in here and it's really well researched really well written but not what I was expecting so I had just like a, such a weird experience reading it and it was like kind of frustrating um, because it's advertised like this you see this cover but that's not what you get you just read about this guy's life his early life for a very very long time one cool thing um, about this is that um, throughout the biography there are parts that weave in the cultural history of 20th century feminism. Uh, the people in Marston's life were directly um, involved in the birth control movement and generally the greater feminist movement. And there are women who like influenced Marston a lot, particularly his um, like live-in partners. He had like a wife and um, other women that he lived with and they kind of contributed to his works and his life and his weird psychosexual feminism. He has like feminism as a fetish. It's kind of an interesting book about him. Um, so yeah, if you're looking up to read a biography of a guy, that's what this book is. I'm a little disappointed that it was so much Marston, but it was pretty good anyway. The other book I want to talk about is a social science fiction. It is called Gem Signs. It's by Stephanie Salter. And this is a really interesting, it's like I got an interesting story, really important themes. So let's start with the um, premise, which is that um, humanity was almost wiped out, they're struggling, and so they make these genetically modified people. And they're tailored to do specific tasks, very hard ones, that they need to be done for humanity to build itself back up. And the genetically modified GMs or are called gems. And a hundred years later, these slaves are are finally freed in the declaration. But though the, the former slaves and the former property of the gem text, these gems, though they are freed, they don't really have defined rights. We need to clarify what their rights are in this whole global legal system. Are they humans? Are are they equal to the norms in the world? And so the book opens with there's a global conference, it's really important coming up, and that's where they're going to define the rights of gems. And our main character is Eli Walker, and Walker is a scientist, he is going to be the unbiased opinion here, and he's in charge of making the report about gems and whether they should be treated equal to humans. There's extremists on both sides, and as of days leading up to this conference, um, he is advocated upon uh, some... I feel like I need a more extreme word. He is stuck between some interesting people. Like one is the brilliant, ruthless executive of one of the gem corporations. She obviously wants the gems back in her servitude. And but it's more complicated than that you would see in the in the book. And there's also a really interesting character who is the leader of the gem community. And she's more de more deformed than usual for a gem, but she's this really strong leader and spokesperson for the community. And so Walker meets all these really interesting people, and they all have their own agendas, and the climate in the streets is really bad. There's a lot of fear amongst the norms, a lot of hate that escalates into violence and just conflict, and so there's a lot of pressure. Like, he needs to find the truth, and Walker is really going, like, he's in the thick of it. It's interesting um, in that way. Uh, the writing and the pace of the book are very measured and constrained and slow, so I would have preferred it to have been much snappier. I think it could have done some more editing. But the important story and the themes of like the fear of the other, they're so relevant to our world today in 2017. So this is like a really great example of such relevant um, 
social science fiction that, that will make you think about your own world, not just this future um, speculative world. It was really, really cool in that way, though I do wish it was a bit snappier. And so there was a couple books that I read in the last week and a bit. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy hearing about them. Until next time, my lovelies.